there's a lot of hype around supercapacitors, but do they really hold the solution to all our problems, and if so, when? So now, Emil, I actually drive an electric car now with batteries okay. that you have to charge up and it takes a long time. And I've read about things like supercapacitors without any idea of what they actually are. Yeah. You know, with the sort of fantasy notion that you just charge it in a second and yeah. it takes all the power that you could possibly give it and then you drive for 10,000 miles. I mean, a capacitor is where you have two plates of uh, conducting material. You put a what we call a dielectric in between those. And then you charge those plates and they store... Uh, energy. What a supercapacitor does is you massively increase the surface area, so by a factor of a thousand, um, compared to a normal capacitor, and you move everything closer together as well, because right. the, the energy you store is related to how, how big the area of the plates are and how close they are together. Right. So in conventional supercapacitors there's lots of approaches to achieving that by making foams or uh, what we call activated fibres. Right. Um, so what we've tried to do is try and utilise some of that sort of thinking, but to take a structural material, a carbon fibre, so something you make fishing rods and tennis rackets out right. of, and turn that into an, an energy storage material. Right, so the bodywork of a car then could yeah. be, could be a, a, an energy storage thing. That's our sort of dream. So right. anything that carries mechanical load and you need electrical energy, so right. your mobile phone, your laptop, your car, because, I mean, that, that to me looks like a sheet of carbon fibre. I mean, it, it, it is, yeah. Oh, it <laughs> is, it is. It is a sheet of carbon fibre. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, see, I was spot on there. I knew exactly what that was. It's but I mean, I can't understand how that can store any electricity. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. So. The amount of energy you can store is related to the surface area. And right. so we've increased the surface area of the fibres a lot. So, I mean, a, a sheet that big, is there any way of saying it's, it's electrical storage capacity? I mean, is it... Is yeah, that... I mean, the best we've got so far in terms of energy we can store is approaching one watt hour per kilogram. Say a lithium ion battery in a car has got what hundreds, per kilogram? I think hundreds of watt hours per kilogram. Right, so it's um, much, much less even than the battery yeah, technology yeah. we have now. What I've heard about them is that, that, that putting that energy into them is faster than, a, than a, let's say, a lithium ion battery or a lead acid battery. That's one of the attractions of supercapacitors is that it's a physical process. There's no chemistry going on. Right. With your little battery, what happens in there is a chemical reaction goes on that releases the electrical energy. And that electrical, pro that chemical process, um, takes time to to happen. Right. So you have effectively an electrical resistance in the material, um, and so when you suddenly want to accelerate um, in your car, for instance, the the battery can't deliver that energy fast enough, right. and you also have um, problems that, as the material is charged and discharged, the volume of the material changes. Oh, so what you mean the actual physical space yeah. it inhabits changes? That's right. Yeah. Right. Because it's changing manifestly into a different material. Right. Um, and in, in doing that, it causes the material to, to crack um, and, and effectively damage the material. Right. right. And particularly when you're asking a lot of energy from the battery when you're switching the car on or switching your phone on, and that causes rapid heating of the battery and causes more damage. Right. So ultimately... Um, what these materials could do is that because there's not the same chemical processes going on, these materials will last, rather than just 100 cycles, last 1,000 million cycles. Wow. Um, so there's no, it doesn't degenerate from being charged no. and discharged? There's a lot of interest in putting this material as a, effectively a buffer. So right. when, when you switch on your car, the, ba the supercapacitor delivers the energy rather than the battery. And right. the battery, the load on the battery, the electrical load on the battery is much lower. And so the battery will last longer. Right. And that's been sort of demonstrated for conventional supercapacitors with batteries. And then with what we're doing, these materials will act as a supercapacitor in conjunction with the battery. On your car. Can you give us a sort of long-term perspective thing when the first sort of carbon fibre supercapacitor car will be on well, the market? I would anticipate three to five years, I think, right. before you can buy a car that... That has some of these elements within it, right. right. But, I mean, in the long term, because, I, I mean, I've heard people say that, yeah, you'll just get a supercapacity and just charge a car like that. You know, that's going to be a little bit... That's a little bit further in the future. I think so, yeah. yeah. The, I think the fundamental problem with supercapacitors is they don't store as much energy as a battery. Because right. a battery is a chemical reaction where you have a huge amount of energy released by the chemistry. Right. Supercapacitors don't have that um, will never really achieve that sort of same level. Right. But there are strategies where you can start to combine the two, you can change the supercapacitors so they have some degree of 
a chemistry going on in right. there as well. So something called pseudo capacitors. Oh, I've never heard of that. That's good. I like a different pseudo capacitor. <laughs> and, and those actually have some chemistry going on, right. which gives more energy, right. basically, but right. still have some of the benefits of super capacitors. Yeah. Next week, school children in homemade EVs charge around Silverstone Racetrack, and they even let me have a go. Click to watch the high-speed action now.